Welcome back to our study in the book of Proverbs. Uh, remember as we work through the book of Proverbs that the book of Proverbs covers a lot of different facets of life and it provides a godly worldview and practical insight uh, for life. And so the themes seen in the book of Proverbs are things that are still relevant to us today. So I want you to remember, and I'm going to say this every week, so I want you to remember this. Godly knowledge is more than information. It's about transformation. You can be factually right, but spiritually wrong. Solomon's argument in the book of Proverbs is simple. Godly wisdom is applied truth that leads to transformation and wise, practical living. So last week we studied uh, the last verses of chapter 3, and so far we've looked at several different things. Here's what we've looked at. We've looked at how godly wisdom helps us fulfill the creative purpose of God. We've looked at the fact that godly wisdom helps us know what direction we need to go. And we've looked at the fact that godly wisdom, or, or the lack of godly wisdom, is demonstrated in the way that we treat others. So today's focus is on chapter 4. In this chapter of Proverbs, um, Solomon is going to help us understand how important it is to choose godly wisdom over worldly wisdom. And so when he's teaching in this, um, in this chapter about choosing godly wisdom, it can be divided into three different sections. And, and here are those sections. As, um, we talk, he talks about the path to take, the path to avoid, and then the choice to make. So as we look through this, uh, all that's in chapter 4, I want you to remember um, those things. So let's start with uh, the path to take. Solomon declared that his aim was to guide people on the path to life. So let's look at chapter 4 and let's begin in verse 11. Um, before verse 11, he talks of, he gives a lot of uh, other advice and some instructions on things, but I want to begin this one. Uh, I want to begin today in verse 11. So verse 11 uh, in chapter 4, I will teach you wisdom. I will teach you wisdom's ways and lead you in straight paths. When you walk, you will not be held back. When you run, you won't stumble. Take hold of my instructions and don't let them go. He says, guard them for they are the key to life. That's the 11 through 13. And actually, I'm going to start with the end of that section. I'm going to start with verse 13 because what he says in verse 13 is vital to us maintaining a godly worldview. So three things I want to focus on here in verse 13. He says, take hold, this idea of taking hold of something. And so taking hold of something means that uh, we have a firm grasp of it and um, that if someone tries to take it away, they're less likely to be successful because we've got a firm grasp on that. Godly wisdom and making good choices, wise choices, they both require that we have a firm grasp on the teachings that we find in the Bible. The second thing I want to focus on in verse 13 is this idea of guarding instruction. Uh, he says in verse 13, he says to guard uh, these instructions, all right? And so the word guard demonstrates a sense of, uh, of protection and watching and, and security, gives the idea of security. So when we see God's instruction and guidance as important and valuable enough to guard, then we are seeking godly wisdom. And then finally, in that verse, I want us to look at the fact that God's instructions comprise the key to life, is what Solomon says here. He says they are the key to life. Um, godly wisdom doesn't just make us closer to God, okay? Godly wisdom also affects the way we see the entire world and, it, and it, uh, it impacts and changes and affects the way we make our choices and the choices that we make, all right? And these impact our quality of life. So he's talking about the key to life. Now, now that we know and we see what he says about how important those are, let's go back and look at what he said in the other two verses and let's see how Solomon says these instructions affect our lives, all right? So um, in verse 11, he begins by saying that they lead us in straight paths, Solomon's giving us a reminder here. It's a reminder that the instructions he's giving to his sons and the instruction that God gives to us help us make right decisions and go down the correct path, all right? Remember how the Israelites wandered in the wilderness. If you go back in Exodus, you see a lot of wandering all over the place. Well, they took the long way to the promised land because they weren't trusting God and they weren't following his direction. So they made a lot of mistakes and then they ended up roaming around uh, in the wilderness. Um, but then in verse 12, 
He talks about not being held back and stumbling. Solomon wants us to have an understanding that, that following godly wisdom keeps us from being tripped up. It, it, it always makes the path easier to follow. Now, it's not going to make the path perfect, and we're still not going to... It's not going to be perfect, but it makes it easier, all right? And I want you to keep this in mind because it's very important. Um, we stumble and fall because we're people, and we are not perfect, and we're not going to always follow godly wisdom the way that it's spelled out. So those are the times that we need to go to what Solomon says in verse 13, to take hold of those instructions again, regroup, and grasp onto them, okay? So he tells us that there is a path that we need to take. Well, the other thing... The, the next thing that he does is, is he does a contrast. Solomon warned against following the path taken by evil people whose appetites for wickedness led to more wickedness. So, so let's, go to, um, let's go to verse 14 and see what he, what he says here. Solomon says, Don't do as the wicked do and don't follow the path of evildoers. Don't even think about it. Don't go that way. Turn away and keep moving. Um, he goes on to say, For evil people can't sleep until they've done their evil deed for the day. They can't rest until they've caused someone to stumble. They eat the food of wickedness and drink the wine of violence. The way of, righteous, the, way of the righteous is like the first gleam of dawn, which shines even brighter until the full light of day. But the way of the wicked is like total darkness. They have no idea what they are stumbling over. I think there's some important things we need to look at. After talking about what godly wisdom does for us, Solomon turns, her up, turns the whole thing around and focuses on the opposite and provides us a stern warning about avoiding evil. And he begins there with a reminder that, that following the wicked lead us to wicked places. Following individuals like this is always a bad idea. All right? Remember that the conduct of the wicked encompasses, when we think about wicked, sometimes we think about the worst. But when we talk about wicked here and talk about the, wicked, the, the wickedness that Solomon mentions here, it's a wide variety of behaviors, including things like uh, disobedience, violence, dishonesty, cruelty, hate, envy. It includes anything that is not godly. All right? And Solomon goes one step further, actually. Solomon says in verse 15, don't even think about that stuff. Don't even go there. And so if our thoughts turn to attitudes and actions, which they do, then the safest thing to do is to keep the wrong thoughts out of our minds to begin with. Now, how do we do that? Well, it, it's not easy. You've got to admit that. Uh, last month, when we were studying the book of Romans, I want you to remember that tall Paul talked about being transformed by the renewing of our minds. And so when our minds are renewed, when they are focusing on God, then it is easier to keep the thoughts from forming in the first place. Um, the things that we fill our minds with when we're um, watching TV or reading magazines or going into those, those are things that impact us. But when we are in tune with what God teaches us, and when we're in tune with what he tells us, then we're better able to keep certain thoughts at bay. All right? Solomon said, don't go that way. He says, even and then, later after that, he says, you should turn away and keep moving. Too often, what we do is um, we go down a path and we convince ourselves that, that we will stop when it's time to stop. But we'll, before we go too far down that path, we'll quit and we'll go with Guys, that doesn't always work. That doesn't, it almost never works. It doesn't work well, all right? An easier way to stay away from evil is to turn away and take a detour in the first place before we go that way. Remember, always remember this, because this is true. And if you think about the things in your life that, that might um, hold you captive, or not hold you captive necessarily, but, but that um, maybe when you see people with addictions, remember this, when, when the path is traveled one time, it becomes very difficult to make the choice to not go down that direction another time. All right? Um, so he wants us to remember, um, don't do that. Don't, don't even go down the path. Don't even start. And then when we move into verses um, 16 through 19 here, Solomon gives a reminder that evil never takes a break. All right? There's always something out there 
that is threatening our relationship with God and our relationships with one another. All right, look at, look at verse 16. It says, evil people can't stop until the evil deed is done. Evil is determined. It is constantly preying on people. It seeks to ruin lives and to ruin relationships. That's what happens. It's always there. It says, he says that they eat the food of wickedness and drink the wine of violence in verse 17. All right? Eat, sleep, and drink evil. It never stops, never takes a break. And then in verses 18 and 19, um, he gives a stark contrast to what is righteous and what is evil. Why don't you look at those verses? Righteousness, he talks about having a right standing with God, living in accordance to that relationship that we have with God. It, he talks about bright light uh, in that verse. Uh, he says, the way of the righteous is like the first gleam of dawn. It shines brighter and brighter and brighter. And then evil and wickedness, there's just, it's moral blindness. There's no moral compass. It's a very dark place to be. But one of the things that he makes clear, both righteousness and evil or unrighteousness are choices that we make. They're not things that we fall in accidentally. We make those choices. And so we have to make choices uh, on a different way. So all of us have choices to make. We're going to go on to that, that last section that he talks about here. Solomon challenged God's people to continually consider godly counsel and remain focused on God. Let's look at verse uh, 20. He says, My child, pay attention to what I say. Listen carefully to my words. Don't lose sight of them. Let them penetrate deep into your heart, for they bring life to those who find them and healing to their whole body. Guard your hearts above all else, for it determines your course in life. Um, goes on in verse, uh, verse 24. Avoid all perverse talk. Stay away from corrupt speech. Look straight ahead and fix your eyes on what lies before you. Mark out a straight path for your feet. Stay on the safe path. Don't get sidetracked and keep your feet from following evil. The final verses in this chapter, in chapter 4, Solomon provides a series of good choices to make. I want us to go through some of those. He says in verse 20, Pay attention to what I say and listen carefully to my words. We have to pay attention to biblical instruction. Um, working... We have to work hard to follow God every, in everyday life. It's hard. It's, it's, it's something we have to do. It's something we have to work at. It requires commitment and obedience. It's not the simplest thing in the world, all right? But he says in verse 20, pay attention to what I say. Then in verse 21, he says, don't lose sight of biblical instruction and let them penetrate deep into our hearts. Remember, our words, our actions, our attitudes, they're all determined in the heart, all right? They constitute what we feel and what we believe deep down in our person and who we are. Um, there's even a reminder in verse 22. The following biblical instruction has an eternal impact on the individual and their decision making. He says um, in verse 22, uh, they bring life to those who find them and healing to their body. There is, a, there, is a, an in, there is an impact when we do that. In verse 23, he goes on. He says, guard your heart above everything else. What we believe and what we place the most importance in are, will determine our course in life. These things are at the innermost part of who we are. And Solomon says, guard your heart above everything else. He said, avoid perverse talk and stay away from corrupt speech. Remember that the way that we communicate with each other is very important. God's people have to be honest in their words. They have to be honest in their actions. Um, they need to... Uh, avoid being critical of everybody because that's not, it's not helpful. It's not beneficial. It's not, a, it's not something that, that builds people up. But he says, avoid perverse talk. Stay away from that kind of speech. And then in verse 25, he says, look ahead and keep your eyes on what is in front of you. Remember that the path to wisdom is a straight path. So it's important that we watch our path so we know where we're going and we know what is important. Um, we keep our eyes ahead of us. Paul said, I don't look behind me. I look ahead of me to, what, to, to the prize and I'll work forward to that prize. Solomon's saying, look ahead of you. See what is coming up and watch it. He also said, 
make out a straight path for your feet and stay on the safe path. Here he's emphasizing that we should carefully choose between the two paths. One of those paths leads to God. One of them does not. And he says, mark out the straight path. Stay on the safe path. Stay on the path that you need to be on. And then in verse 27, he says, don't get sidetracked by doing the wrong things or don't get sidetracked by the wrong stuff. Here's what, here's what I know. Trusting God will keep us on the right path on our relationship with Him. But I know and you know there are things that distract us from the right path. There are things that grab our attention, that, that have us looking one way or another. Things, that can, that, things distract us from that right path. But when we stray from the path, we need to make sure that we return as quickly as possible. Because one of the things that, that Solomon's teaching here is that there's a choice to make and we make the choice. Now, are we always going to make the right choice? Well, no, we don't always make the right choice. But one of the things that he, mo that he stresses, that he says is the most important, is that um, when we make the wrong choice, when, when we go down... Uh, when he up here, when he talks about the path to avoid and the path to take, when, when we find ourselves on the path that we should avoid, we've got to correct it as soon as we can. Um, I, I wrote down here at the at the end this closing thought: "It's a life is filled with choices. Hearing the truth of God demands that we make a choice." Solomon's plea in chapter four is for us to hear, obey, and not turn away from the wisdom of God. It also reminds us that choices have to be made. We make choices. It's, our life is filled with choices. To embrace God's wisdom provides the best way through life, but the choice is always ours to make. Choosing godly wisdom is always the path, but we have to make that choice. It's not something that, that we're just going to fall into. It's not something that's going to be uh, simple, and it's not something that is just going to happen because our parents want it to happen for us or our pastor wants it to happen for us. We're, we have to make that choice, all right? All right, so next week we are going to move on to chapter 5 and we're going to talk about uh, a little bit about that one. That one's going to talk about faithfulness in a lot of ways and we'll talk about that next week. I want to remind you of our schedule items like I always do. Uh, youth worship is every Wednesday at 6.15 on the youth floor. On-campus worship services at 9 a.m. and 11 a.m. every Sunday. The 11 a.m. is live-streamed on Facebook and YouTube. Uh, activities for children and preschoolers will still schedule to begin back on July 12th during the 11 o'clock worship. Now, not during the 9 o'clock worship, just 11. Uh, teaching care for preschoolers, birth through kindergarten. Uh, summer children's worship for children in grades 1 through 6. And um, we've got lots of details coming up. And um, soon you're going to have a link to a, um, a form that will let you reserve a spot for your preschooler so we know that you're coming and we know to expect you guys. Um, On-campus life groups tentatively on Sunday, August 16th, but we'll, we'll make um, other decisions that move closer. Uh, until then, we're still going to study the book of Proverbs and work through it, all right? Uh, remember, always remember communication options, Facebook, Instagram, Vimeo, YouTube, email, and our website. And then, all of, of course, we are in the office uh, each weekday. And we're, we're still continuing to pray for you and your family um, as we still navigate this time and as we begin some slow transitions and some, some, some slow things, uh, trying to be a little bit back to normal. Before I go, let me pray for us, and then we'll see you next week as we get ready to study the fifth chapter of Proverbs. Let's pray together. Father, thank you for the love you have for us, and thank you for... Um, creating us to be able to make choices. Father, I pray that we would focus on you, that we would make the right choices. In your name we pray. Amen. Thanks, everybody.